four. Mm-hmm. And Kevin. Mm-hmm. We're living in a house together. Mm-hmm. And I was living someplace else. My girlfriend threw me out. Mm-hmm. So I started staying on their couch. Mm-hmm. And they already were sort of it sort of formed already. And I said, Hey, you should let me sing for you guys. Now was Norm drumming in the band at this time? No, he was singing. Mm-hmm. That's and right. his brother was drumming. Norm's brother? No, your drummer at Point. Oh, my drummer was brother. Yeah, and then he, he Norm had to quit, and so then I got to be singer, mm-hmm. sort of by default, and then and then my brother. Of course, quit. that's when everything took off. Truly. And Norm's not in the band. No, he was in the Jayhawks yeah. drumming, and, and he quit then, singing because he couldn't do both. No. No, he, he could. And then he quit the Jayhawks, and then later he joined us again as drummer. After my brother quit. Yeah. And this other guy, who we don't have. <laughs> so we played on all, well, we still do, but we practiced all the time. For I mean, not practiced even, it was just fun, you know. Yeah. Six hours, four nights a week, just because it was, it was really new to me and my brother. We'd never played before. Thor had played before. It was just... Did really, you get the idea for the name? Nobody knows anymore. We made up so many lies about that that I can't. I think we just... Just a name. It's easy. It sticks with us. It's easy to remember. We never thought we'd play more than, you know, five or six shows, so the name wasn't that important. Part of the appeal, I remember, was that at the time, you know, it was a long time ago, all the names were really intense and scary, and we didn't really, weren't really, inter- we didn't, it was kind of a fly in the face of the punk rock people. Well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, we've toured months and months with Hammerhead, and we've always had a great time with those guys. Supernova. Supernova, Supernova great, yeah. great, really fun. Choke War, we've toured a lot with and always really enjoyed with. We did a, we've done like shows here and there with the Melvins and always had a really good time. Oh, Sonic Youth, and we played with Wire once. Helmet. Helmet, Buttle mm-hmm. Surfers. Nirvana. Nirvana. Ciao. We recorded that in a practice space live on 4-track with Brian Paulson. And didn't Trias put that out? Yep. This guy who used to do our records, Mark Trias, put it out. And Tom Hazelmeyer liked it a lot. In fact, he didn't like us till he heard that single. And then that's how we got hooked up with Tom. Yeah. Well, I lived across the street from Tom, and he had just put out the first dope Guns and Fucking compilation, the very first 7-inch. It was very underground, and I really liked it a lot. And I talked to him, and I just said, We'd love to be on one of those compilations. And he said, well, I really like Chow a lot. Why don't you go ahead and record a song and I'll put it out. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And Mark Trios, who ran Trios Almost labels, a God. Almost a God was the song, right. Mark Trios became angry with us for some reason. And so we went to AMRAP. He he, he well, resented we wanted, that we, we were wanted to put out an album and he didn't have enough money to do it so well yeah i remember i don't know we all remember it. i remember him really resenting that we did the dope guns cut for some reason the waiting room highlights magazine high school hockey on tv we're not exempt from caring about that um and then this way is uh, the old examining room in our offices i do <laughs> distribution publicity blah blah, blah anything that falls on records getting the office. And I guess this answers the question why we're here. We used to share office space with Twin Tone, and then uh, Helmet went nuts. So we got to bail on the Twin Tone office and move into Dr. Griscoff's old office when he retired. All right, well, the studio is uh, down. Yeah, this is downstairs the studio, the old basement. Max Land, he's the engineer. He's 
everything from engineering the record to he's responsible for building this whole place. Um, records were recorded downstairs. Mac, Tim Mac, recorded a lot of them, but like Ian Burgess did the cows section two story that I said earlier. Um, so that was recorded here? Yeah. Okay. One of the first records recorded here, too. Um, was that, when that came out at the time, that was, that was pretty old. Oh, it was, it was brand new material, oh. but it was like one of the first records that they did in here. Yeah, this is 16 track board, and as far as the equipment breakdown, uh, Mac is the one who kind of gives a better overview. But 16 track, I believe the half inch, you've got analog equipment, you've got digital equipment, pretty much the bottom line is quality at a fair, fair price. So. That was very, very, they've all been really low budget. We've never spent much money on any of our videos. Uh, it's always been done backdoor, cheap. Cheap as we can do it. Cost of film by a friend, Dave Roth, who's uh, been a friend of ours for years and worked with Soul Asylum doing videos and stuff. So it's always been backdoor. Recently, we discovered this guy, Donnie Briley, down in Nashville. It was like country stuff. Um, he literally sent us a video, the video on the last dope gone volume three for its mind. And uh we were just like it's great, we included it. So he did a new video for Allergic to Myself, which he came up here and filmed and it turned out great. Um, before that it was like Dave Roth, uh John Anglum, who was the drummer for Halo of Flies, did some. Pretty much uh that's it. Kind of another in house situation. MTV pretty much says outright that they are not interested in airing anything that is not on a major label and they say that in those words so well it has to do with greasing palms and also has to do with that they're going to put something on their station they want it to be able to sell a million copies and amphetamine reptiles and equipped to sell a million copies of anything right so we're two small potatoes mm-hmm yeah. there's half filled living yeah. rooms all yeah. around <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, when we don't produce big budget MTV videos, it makes no sense. Yeah. I don't even think those look good. Now, you're going to watch a video called Sugar Torch. Like animation on the older video, um, on the cow's first one, Cartoon Corral, which is on the first Dope Guns video, Shannon draws, Shannon and Kevin actually both draw these like creepy little creatures. You've probably seen them on their flyers yeah. and stuff. 
So Shannon worked with Dave Roth to do the animation on that. David Roth. He did the everything. He did all the camera work, I think, pretty much. He had a little bit of help in all the editing, and he did some of the animation based on drawings by Shannon Soberg of the cows. And then Donnie Briley did Allergic to Myself. He came up from Nashville and did it. He was interested in working with us. And there's another one called Mine that was done by somebody whose name totally escapes me. Uh, his name's uh, Mike. Mike from Nashville. He did all the animation, and Donnie Briley did the editing for that. He just did the Mine one on his own, unsolicited by the cows. <coughs> and it's probably one of the best ones ever. Good things to eat. 